Hi. <laughs> if you have been a regular viewer on this channel, you know 2021 has not been my reading year. At this point, I don't have anything to talk about. There's nothing that I, I want to say. There's more so what I want to do. And I keep trying to fix it and it keeps not happening. So I was sitting here and I was thinking to myself, Megan, what can we do? What can we do to make, you know, to make this happen, to get our reading slump, to have some new favorite books. And I thought, let me just ask you guys what your favorite books you've read so far this year have been, and then I'm gonna read them. So that's what we've done. I just asked on Twitter, like casually. What's your favorite book you read this year? Good. Or something like that, I don't know what I said. And I probably could have got more responses, like if I did something a bit official, or if I did it on Instagram as well, but I only asked on Twitter. There was a ton of books, but obviously it was just a ton of variety because you're all reading different things. So there was like so many books that like one or two of you said, but the ones I'm gonna be reading in this vlog was like three or four of you said. So it's not like an overwhelming numbers of people, but that's because I didn't do it that officially. So what we're gonna be reading, let me show you, I'm very excited. So the first book I am terrified to read because I haven't done a five star prediction updated video. I have now LMAO, I filmed this a long time ago. But if I was to do one now, this would be on there. And four of you said The House in the Cerulean Sea by TJ Kloon. <laughs> Are we surprised? This is like a booktube favourite. I have not seen anyone read this and not love it. All I know about it is that it's about a guy who has to travel to like this orphanage with magical children that are maybe gonna end the world cause they're so dangerous. And I think it's like a gay relationship between him and the guy who runs the orphanage as well. I've heard it's like a middle grade for adults. It's just so like emotional and heartwarming and lovely. And I'm so excited right now. Riley has been telling me to read this for so long. I know this is one of her favorites. So I hope I'm gonna make her proud. So yeah. I'm super excited. I'm so excited to read this. And then the ones that three of you said, firstly, we've got Watch Over Me by Nina LaCour. I already owned this. This was one that I've been so excited to read for such a long time. All I know is it, it's about a girl who goes to this farm. I think she's an orphan and she goes to live on this farm to kind of like work there, but it's haunted by ghosts or something. And it's also to do with her trauma. Super excited to get to this. I think this could possibly be like a favorite, favorite, favorite. I mean, I think all of these could be. This is the first time in a while I've done a reading vlog and I'm like, these could all be five stars. Wishful thinking. Yes. You're a dreamer. You dream a lot and you're sleep. No, not really. I'm not. Yes, you do. No, I <laughs> Yes, don't. you do. Then we've got another one I already owned, which is Legend Born by Tracy Dion. This is like an Arthurian retelling. I don't really know anything about it other than that. Like her mother dies in a car accident. She's at this university when she's only 16, like she's like an advanced student. And there's like something about this like Arthurian knights. It's very strange. But I've heard really, really good things about this. I've been super excited to read it for a while. And then one that I had heard quite a few people speak about, like on booktube that they were reading it, but I actually haven't, I don't think I've heard anyone review it. I think I've like watched live sprints when people have been reading it. But I wasn't expecting this to have so, like, to be one of the books in this video. It's Amari and the Knight Brothers by B.B. Alston. I don't even know the plot of this. It's a middle grade that came out earlier this year. Amari's brother's gone missing. She's invited for a trial at the Bureau of Supernatural Affairs. She's certain this is her chance to save him. Okay. For this one, we're just going to go with it and find out what it's about as we go along. I really am excited for this though because I love middle grade. I love the experience of reading middle grade. And I haven't... When was the last time I loved, loved middle grade? I don't know. I generally can't remember. So I'm hoping this could be a new favourite. So... They're the four books we're going to be reading in this video that have been some of your favorite books so far this year. And I'm really excited because I feel like these could all be five stars. Like these are all heavy hitters. These are big names. <laughs> these are big name books. I think I'm going to start with Watch Over Me. I'm hoping this can be one that I can read pretty fast because it's only like 260 pages. So it will like get me motivated, get me, <laughs> I say this in every video about how I need to get motivated to read. But we're gonna start with this and we'll see how it goes. It's 
it's so dark in here. It's like two o'clock, but it's like so dark. I've got the ring light cranked up to high. <laughs> right, here's the thing. I feel like I'm getting my mojo back. That's the first thing I want to say. Like, I feel like we're back. I feel like the tide is turning. I'm here to enjoy myself, GC style. Do you know what I mean? I just want to be me. I usually check in like a third of the way through a book or halfway through a book. I got halfway through this last night and then I went to go make dinner and I was like, okay, after dinner, I'm gonna come and check in. And then when I was making dinner, I was getting some baked beans out of the microwave and I got them wrong and I burnt my hand, I spilt them, and then I dropped the bowl so they spilt them all down me, like hot, 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 <laughs> hot baby. And I got it all up the walls. <laughs> so I felt a bit sorry for myself and I didn't wanna like come and film. So I was just like, Megan, you can just finish the book. You can just do that. It's okay. No one's gonna hate me. I hope no one's gonna hate me. <laughs> That is not correct. Here's the thing. It's five stars. <laughs> it's five stars. It's five stars. It's five stars. I loved this. This is everything. This is, this is my kind of book. This is my kind of book. This is it. This is it. Smash, 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 smash. Smash. We're following a girl named Mila who has been in the foster care system and she's aged out of it. She gets to go to this farm where other foster kids live. This couple runs this farm and kids, like young adults who have aged out of the system can go and work there and like teach the younger kids there. And she gets that position. But when she gets there, everyone there can see ghosts. There's like ghosts that like dance and play with everyone like child ghosts on the farm and for most of the book you're not sure whether those ghosts are real you're kind of like is this actually happening or like what's going on here but this is just an app oh, you guys you don't even understand this is an absolutely beautiful book about trauma about grief about her it's written so hauntingly like that's how I would describe it not just because there's ghosts but the style of writing it's so haunting and the kind of like grief and the melancholiness lays so heavy over the book oh my god I can't describe how much I love this there's this really special relationship between Mila and the boy that she teaches Lee how they try to like work through their trauma together and how she tries to help him even when she's not really, to, really ready to help herself. The thing I love about this, it, it reminds me of a lot of those kind of my favorite like YA weird books. You're not sure who you can trust. So like I never really trusted the people on the farm. I can't trust them. They don't know what they doing. It's written in this way where you don't know what is real and people act in very strange ways. Like people don't really act the characters don't act in a way that people act, like the way that they interact. And so you're like, what is happening here? Like, are we all imagining this? Is something sinister going on? And that's what I love in books when there doesn't have to be something actually sinister going on, but it's got that undercurrent of unease because of how like melancholy and sad this book is. I almost cried at the end. There was, oh my God, the ending. Like I read the last hundred pages of this engrossed and I haven't read a book like that in a long time where like I literally can't take my eyes off it the denouement of the book was so beautifully written I was like almost crying like just to how beautiful and poignant oh my god I'm like <laughs> just how beautiful and poignant the words were this was so good it was so good so I, I just love I think I've realized like a, my favorite genre is probably this kind of like weird young adult surrealism fabulism magical realism whatever you want to call that kind of like big encompassing bracket that's my favorite genre like without a shadow of a doubt i really can't wait to read uh we are okay by nina lacour i don't have it and i'm on a book buying man but one day i'll get it and i'll read it i'm very excited it definitely reminded me of katrina leno i've got katrina leno's other two books so i'm really excited to read them because this is just kind of like the vibe right now you know what i mean like this is it i'm obsessed
So if you've got any more recommendations, particularly I want to read more authors of colour like in this vein, in this kind of like surrealism, often like melancholy or dealing with like anger or sadness or trauma books. That's what I'm looking for. So if you've got any recommendations, please let me know. And the way it explored grief and trauma and hurt was so beautiful. Such a beautifully written book. We are off to a success. This is what I was hoping this video would be. I thought I'd be reading like heavy hitters. Like, like I'm getting a bit violent. Oh, that was, that was another thing I wanted to say. I loved the quietness of it. It's such a quiet, small book. Like you're on this farm isolated. There's this like you know, group of characters who are kind of like acting as a family together and just how quiet it is. So an, an example I can think of is You Must Not Miss by Katrina Leno. It's very loud in its anger. The character has been through trauma and is very like angry with that trauma and rightfully so. But what I loved about this is it's kind of like the opposite where the trauma has made the character like draw into herself and everything is very small. Um, I just thought it was done so well. So five stars. If you've been eyeing this up, pick it up. It was so good. It was so good. Oh my God, I loved it. Next, I looked at you weird then. <laughs> Next, I think I'm gonna read Amari and the Knight Brothers. Again, I don't know anything about the plot for this, but I'm just feeling like a middle grade and the cover is beautiful. This has got like a 4.5 something rating on Goodreads. Like it's got such a high rating. So I'm hoping for really good things. Like people are saying it's their favorite middle grade they have ever read. I'm gonna start. Oh my God, look, there's like really gorgeous illustrations in here. Okay, I'm gonna go start this and I will check in with you partway through this. I won't just read the whole of it and then come back to you. <laughs> last spoke to you this video i started it weeks and weeks and weeks ago and then i've done like three vlogs since the level of unprofessionalism far too much it's been really broken up but i am halfway through amari and the knight brothers but that reading has been very broken up it's been like 40 pages here then i read another book and 50 pages here then i read another book so i'm hoping to just read the rest today so that it is a more of like a cohesive reading experience, but I am really enjoying this. This is like one of my favorite middle grades that I think I've ever read. So basically we have Amari whose brother has just gone missing and she gets an invitation to this like camp or training place for the Bureau of Supernatural Affairs. And that is somewhere that her brother was and it's this whole secret life that she didn't know he had. Um, and it's basically, he was a really famous agent for this Bureau of Supernatural Affairs. So it's all about these supernatural creatures and magic. And it's really like magic boarding school vibes. And so it, it feels like nostalgic in that sense. I love Amari as a character and the writing in this is amazing. Honestly, this is so good. You guys, this is so good. It's, it's amazing. It's so amazing to me. This is just mind blowing. I remember I watched uh, Nicole talk about this in a wrap up that she did a couple days ago. And she spoke about how it explores issues like race and class really well. Um, in lots of different settings, like how Amari is disadvantaged by her race and class in lots of different settings, even in this supernatural world. Um, and it's so interesting and it's really fast paced. I'm just really, I'm just loving this experience. But I feel like this isn't a proper check-in because my reading has been so disjointed. Like I literally just read the first, last 40 pages, um, but everything else I read like kind of weeks ago. So like I'm a bit like, <laughs> oh, there's like these trials as well, which is really fun. Like I feel like there's a lot of like classic trope elements, um, but done in this really new and exciting way. So 
to stay in the Bureau of Supernatural Affairs and to kind of like become this agent, uh, you have to pass lots of trials. And so there's like kind of like a different trial every week, which I think we're kind of approaching the first one now and we're going to go through the rest of them. But that's really fun, like this competition element with the other kids. And I won't say who, but this does draw in some like characters from classical Victorian literature. Um, and reimagines them in this like supernatural setting. And that's something that one of my favorite, not in a supernatural setting, but one of my favorite um, series, The Strange Case of the Alchemist's Daughter did that, where you had all of these characters from classic Victorian literature in this story again. And I really love that. Like when we just kind of like bring those characters back, they're in the public domain, nobody owns them. Let's just use them. I'm a genius. I love it. I think it's so fun to have those little Easter eggs like appear. So yeah, I'm gonna try and finish this today. It shouldn't take me long because it is a middle grade, but I'm really enjoying it. I didn't finish Amara and Night Brothers last night, <laughs> but I'm actually gonna pop out to the Waterstones Cafe in the city today because I haven't been, um, obviously because it hasn't been open in ages and I'm moving back home in like a week. So I wanna go before that happens and go and spend some time there. So I'm hoping I'm gonna finish Amari and the Night Brothers and also maybe get a bit of the way through the next book, which is Legend Born. I had such a good time sitting in the in the cafe yesterday and reading and I read so much. I generally think I get some of my best reading done when I go and sit in a cafe. Like I just get in the zone and I just read so much. So firstly I finished Amari and the Night Brothers by BB Alston. This is like a 4.25 for me. It's like somewhere between a 4 and a 4.5. It just has the perfect like whimsy magical tone in the writing that you want from a book like this, that you want from a middle grade fantasy. Just the way it is written is so amazing. Like it has so many amazing little nuggets of information and like uh, magicalness, like so many complexities to it, which I really love. Like it's a really fleshed out world and magic system. How this bureau has all these different departments and we get to visit them all. There's loads of really great characters. We have quite a big cast of characters in this and I think they're all done equally well. It was such an engrossing read the second half of this. Like I just sat there and flew through it. Nothing was getting me to put down this book. Like I loved it. It was so good. It just didn't feel like a five star, but it's definitely, I think, up there as one of my favorite middle grades of all time. If not, is it the favorite middle grade of all time? I don't know. I can't think at the moment of anything that can top it, but I feel like I have given a middle grade five stars before, but maybe not. Maybe this is it. It was just clever and funny and difficult and explored so many topics. I loved Amari as a character. I cannot wait. I cannot wait to continue on with this series. I'm so excited for more to come out in this series. The fact that this is a debut is honest, it's shock worthy. The fact that this is a debut is shock worthy. I can't believe it. If you want like a middle grade boarding school magic kind of vibe, oh, it's just so good. So, so good. It was such an enjoyable read. I'm so glad I read it. You guys are right. This was a great book. I understand why so many people love this. Rightfully so. I am actually already halfway, almost, through Legendborn as well. I told you I read a lot. I read a lot. I just stayed there for ages and just read. I'm listening to the audiobook of this as well. It's a really long audiobook. It's 18 hours long. So this is a quite a long book because it's almost 500 pages and the font is tiny. In this, we're following Brie, whose mum has just died in a car crash. She's gone to, is it Carolina? Hmm. She's gone to university as like an early admission person. Like she's only 16, but she's kind of gone to college now. She gets caught up in this secret society which call themselves like legend born and like descendants of King Arthur and there's this whole like energy and magic and she can see things she's not supposed to and yada yada yada. Okay. Um, it's fine. I'm sorry that my behavior has upset people. And I've never intentionally um, set out to upset anyone. Like, I'm enjoying it. It's not bad. It's really well written. 
But I don't feel the same pull to read it that I felt in something like this. I feel like in this, all of the minor characters were really well fleshed out, but I feel like we almost have in some ways too big of a cast here. It's, and it's all like these, <laughs> a, the <laughs> a theme in this is like racism and colonization, like historical colonization and historically white spaces and what it's like to exist in those as a black person. So in the society, we just have so many white people and with all these white people names and they're all the same. Then I just don't, I can't <laughs> separate from, <laughs> I, just I know the two main guys in this society and then everyone else you're all blurring into one i i just feel like it it's a bit long like i feel like it takes 10 words to say what could have been said in six as a whole there's not necessarily sections i would cut out but everything is just a little bit too long and listen i'm a sucker for long sentences this isn't usually something i have a problem with but it just feels a bit like not actually much has happened in a lot of story you know what I mean? But uh, this makes it sound like I'm not enjoying it. I am really, really enjoying it. The audiobook narrator is great. I will update you with my thoughts once I've finished it. But like, right now it's just good. What I'm about to say could hurt some people, but I don't give a shit. Okay, so I'm back. Was I in the same spot yesterday? I think I was. We're going home soon. It doesn't matter. <laughs> I finished it. And... I really don't know how to feel. I'm in a conundrum. Okay, so for the majority of this book, I wasn't loving it. And that's a very unpopular opinion. I've gone, I've looked on Goodreads, everyone is out here giving it five stars. Everyone and their mum. Every single person, five stars. Five stars, five stars, five stars. No, not, not for me. Not for, I know I'm the outlier here, so like, don't let my opinions put you off reading this because everyone else loves it. I actually started reading the audiobook at three times speed, which I never do, just because I wanted to get through it. I was just bored. I could recognize it was good, like objectively, but my enjoyment level, I was bored. I don't feel like I ever bought into the like magic system and particularly how it affected like the wider world. I could never see really how it went beyond this little like group of teenagers. <laughs> like I, it was mentioned and it was explained, but I think it felt very insular because I could never see it beyond the group we had. I struggled to believe in it and also I've never been a big fan of love triangles. I've never really vibed with that. Nah, <laughs> this is not for me. No. They've always frustrated me. <laughs> so there is a love triangle in this. Not obvious, but you can see how it's being set up for the other books. And it just irritated me. And whenever we had scenes that were like to advance the love triangle, I was just like, oh, fuck off. <laughs> like I just didn't, I know other people like them. It's just a personal thing. They've always made me angry. Like, <laughs> see, I don't know why. I just don't like them. But here's the thing. The ending, like the last 50 pages were amazing. Like, were so good. So, so good. It was so moving, so interesting. I just, I just loved it. I just absolutely loved the ending. I thought it was genius. It was something I could never have predicted and was really unexpected. And when you see it come together, it was just so clever. But I've been having this conundrum recently. I had it in my last reading vlog. Does the ending change the rating of a book if the large percentage of it you felt another way? Right? So like I read, um, spoilers for my last vlog if you haven't seen it, but I read The Devil in the Dark Water by Stuart Turton and the majority of this was a five star, but the ending wasn't great. And so I decided like the ending didn't prevent this from being a five star, right? This is a three, like a three star book for me, but does the ending raise that? And I don't know if it does, because here's the thing, maybe it could raise it to like a 3.5, but then I should have, I should round it to like a four on Goodreads and it's never a four, it's not a four, cause I felt bored. So I think I'm just gonna give it three stars, but the ending was great. Originally I wasn't actually gonna continue on with the series, but I think the ending has made me want to. I'm sorry, I feel like I need to be more careful with the YA fantasy I pick up because it's something I pick up a lot, but I don't think I have a ton of success with. I definitely haven't, haven't had a ton of success with it this year. I think I know what I like and what I don't like, but I still pick up things with the tropes and the kind of like world building that I know isn't my favorite, but I still pick it up hoping it's gonna be my favorite. It, it's a three star. I'm really sad. I thought I was gonna love this because everyone loved it, but 
alas. <laughs> <laughs> so that brings us on to the last book of this vlog, which I am actually about to explode with excitement for. Like, <laughs> I don't know how to contain myself. The House in the Cerulean Sea by TJ Klune. Oh my God, I cannot wait. Searching for something that ain't lost. Have we got a you guys i'm i've only read the first chapter but i'm already in love i'm already in love with it like 10 oh my god <laughs> you guys I am about a third of the way through, I'm on page 126, I'm in love. We did it! Yes! We've won! Yes! 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 Oh my gosh, we won! I can't believe it! I'm in love. I'm obsessed. I already want to reread it. This is going to be five stars. If you're wondering what my rating was, guarantee you don't even need to watch the rest of this video. You could click off, you know the rating. <laughs> I'm in love. I'm in love. Everything I've ever wanted in a book. It's everything I've ever wanted. It's everything I've ever wanted. I, this is, ev this is it. How have I not read this yet? How has it taken me this long? Where do I even start? Let's tell you the plot. If you don't know, because everyone's been speaking about it, we're following Linus Baker, who works for the department in charge of magical youth. Um, and they go around like these orphanages where these magical children are and deem whether it's suitable living situations for the kids. But there's obviously some kind of like shady shit going on. And um, I don't think they treat the kids very well in the living situations. And like if they tear apart an orphanage and say it's not good enough, the kids don't necessarily go on to a better place. And Linus has always followed the company line. He's worked there for 17 years. He doesn't have much of a life. He doesn't question authority. And then he gets sent uh, on a special classified mission to the orphanage in the house in the Cerulean Sea where there are a group of children who are very unusual. Very, very unusual. Unlike anything he's ever seen before. So... <laughs> You guys, it's told in this whimsical, magical, jo like jokey kind of tone. Almost like you have this omniscient narrator living above the story who's making fun of everything. That is how I like my stories told. You know what's the most exciting thing about winning? It's when you win. I love that feeling. I like it to feel like we're watching some like, I don't know old timey movie or something or or play and there's this narrator who's helping tell the story who's like above it do you know what i mean or just the style that it's told is sarcastic and fun and funny and oh my god i just love it oh my god i can't i can't emphasize to you enough how much fun this book is. It definitely reminds me of Eleanor West's School for Wayward Children, very similar premises. Yeah, the Wayward Children series by Sean Maguire, it's very similar. I feel like that one's a bit darker, that series, and this series is a bit more whimsical. It's everything I've ever wanted in a book. America, facts are facts. It's everything I've ever wanted in a book. I cannot get over it. I'm actually in shock. Like, I really don't know how to act. I really do not know how to act. I'm in love with the kids already. We've only really just met them. I'm in love with the guy who runs the orphanage. I'm in love with the whole attitude. Him and Linus are butting heads, but we know soon. What is that? That's not supposed to imitate anything. I was just trying to show that they're going to fall in love, basically. That wasn't... It's like a fairy tale. It's like this whimsical, magical... I've heard it described by the author as like a middle grade for adults. And that's what it is. It's, it's written for adults. It's not a middle grade. But it captures that whimsy and that magicalness and that childlike energy of a middle grade. And I'm just obsessed. I'm going to go read more. I cannot stop reading it. And I will check in with you once I've read a bit more. But oh my god, you guys, how's it taking me this long? How's it taking me this long? Ladies and gentlemen, this is something they call a groundbreaker, breaker, breaker. <laughs> so let me first apologize. Who's just me? Yo, makeup, makeup. Don't make it Anyone remember Labyrinth? 
anyone. I feel like that was only really successful in the UK. But he now writes music for Euphoria, if anyone was wondering. That was your Labyrinth update. Thank me later. <laughs> I'm still in love with it. It's a ground breaker, 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 breaker. I don't actually love myself this much. I just act like I do. I love it with my whole heart. It's already one of my favorite books ever. I already want to reread it. It's immaculate. It's, I'm having the best time. I actually feel embarrassed. I feel embarrassed to come and stand here and talk to you because no words that are gonna come out of my mouth are gonna give this the respect it deserves. None of it, no, nothing I say will be good enough because it's outstanding. I'm on page 250 and I just love the kids in this and the way that it's like looking at helping them recover and gain confidence. Oh, oh my God. So basically we've got a lot of different characters. We've got, for example, a gnome, like one girl who's a gnome. We've got this boy. Oh my God. My favorite is Chauncey. He's like kind of like this water. No one really knows what's up with him, but like water, fishy, kind of like a jellyfish. He really wants to be like a bellboy from watching it in film. So he's like, oh my God, there was this scene where Linus walked past his room and he was in the mirror, like practicing to be a bellboy. And my heart broke. Like I actually can't take it. Don't make me... Also, it's very quiet in the same way Watch Over Me was very quiet and gentle. And just looking at about these like kids being happy and like also persecution in this society against them and the prejudice against them. Oh, there's loads of kids. I haven't gone through them all. We also have Lucy, who is Lucifer, who is the son of the devil. So that's a very interesting dynamic. It's just the perfect book. It's beautiful, whimsical, the perfect amount of whimsical. It's everything you need in a book. Oh. Oh no. Never has such a perfect book been created. I'm saying it. I haven't even finished it and I'm saying it. But anyway, I'm gonna go pack for a bit. We're moving out in three days and I'm gonna pack up my books first and foremost. I wanna pack them by genre just so they're easy for me to sort through and I kind of like know roughly where everything will be when I get home. So I need to start doing that. Well, I'm gonna put all new releases together and then by genre. So I'm gonna go start doing that. And then after that, I will finish the book. And I am so excited. I try to fix things that weren't broken. Misunderstandings and words unspoken. We fall apart and I won't dare to say. Do you feel the same way? Maybe you don't want to know, but you don't. It's really interesting to see actually like the spread of my genres so we've got romance with two books <laughs> then mystery thriller is those two sects which is quite a lot then non-fiction uh horror um graphic novel and contemporary but by far the majority of my books are fantasy <laughs> with uh, these two stacks and then like magical realism and historical fiction classics so a good mix but it's crazy how much fantasy I have. Okay, so I finished it and it's one of my favorite books of all time. It's one of my favorite books of all time. I loved it so much. I love good news, love good news. I just love good news. <laughs> it was beautiful, whimsical, magical, joyful. It's such a happy book. I feel like if you're wanting a happy book, escapist happy book to read, this is what you need to read. I already want to reread it. I can't wait to make everyone in my life read it. Oh my God. <laughs> the relationships that Linus, the main character and the children form are just incredible. To see him go from this like gray person. Is anyone, do you remember the music video for Bad Day? And it's like in the music video that they're like working in these offices and they're like sad. That's what his before was. And the way that he grew and learned to open himself up to joy and to love through the relationship with these children was just like, oh my God. I almost cried at the end. There was a point at the end, right at the end where I almost cried. It's just, it was just like this little moment between him and one of the children and like, 
I feel like when I've loved a book so much, for a while afterwards, I struggle to speak about it. Like, when I have issues with a book, that's easier to speak about. But when a book was perfect, there's nothing for me to say other than it was perfect. Like, I just don't know. I'm just, like, in awe at it. What this book really focuses on is prejudice against people unlike us in society and, and like, how damaging that can be and, and just really exploring that topic. And I just thought... It was just done so well and this book is perfect and I want to reread it. I very rarely want to reread books but I feel like this could be something I could reread again and again and again and again. I just loved it. I, I don't have anything else to say. <laughs> perfect characters, perfect storyline, perfect progression, perfect dialogue, the way that it had that. Like it will say things like and he loved it so or something like just the way the sentences were formed from the, like the narration perspective was just everything. It's just everything. If you haven't read this yet, please go read it. It's so good. Don't wait around any longer like I was. So this vlog was incredibly successful. I am out of my reading slump. I'm out of it. She's gone. She's in the past. We're only moving forward. I don't know the woman. And on the whole, we had a really successful video with two five stars. Thank you to everyone who recommended these to me. I had such great fun reading these. Let me know down in the comments what your favorite reads of the year so far have been. And if you've gotten to the end, because this has been a long ass video, comment like a house emoji for the house from Cerulean Sea. And yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this vlog and I'll see you very soon in another one. Bye.